all right guys welcome back um in this first video um we're gonna introduce the concept of related rates at least um looking at example that relate to our, our class um so we learn um derivatives uh and some of the calculus concept up to this point so when we refer to rates we refer to change of rates and that's in math, we use derivative to um, describe that. Um, but another way to look at that is how are things relate to each other. So, and that's what this section is about: is how do we, how do we mathematically describe one thing relate to another thing, um, and tie them together and create an equation and, and make sense of things. Um, so, just a quick example: uh, before when when COVID hit. Um, you know, you have uh, the uh, rates of the uh, COVID uh, is going up. Um, um, it was spreading. Uh, at the same time, the um, stock market prices, the rate of, of the prices is decreasing. So, you know, all that can be can be described or can be think of how, th you know, how are things can relate in, in some sort of way. Um, so, you know, the rate of COVID um, uh, spreading was slowing down uh, a month ago. And you know we had the um a lot of right uh, uh a lot of uh, protesting writing and people are out and about and now the rate of COVID uh spread is going back up again so you know it's it's all related relatively one way or another and and listen this class we look at some example how do how do we describe that through some some of the math equations or some of the concept we learned um in this class. So the first example we're gonna look at is just a math example. Kind of, kind of introduce the third variable that we know, uh, that we don't know, but we're gonna know in this class. Um, so so far we're looking at an equation of functions are usually just in x and y. Um, so let's consider this ex example here. Um, it's a x cube uh, function. So x to the third plus one. So suppose this function here, um, where both of the variables depends on t. So we assume that both x, uh, both uh, where both x and y are functions of t. That means that means x is a function of t, and then y is a function of t as well. They both depends on the time t. So suppose this uh, cubic graph here. If I was to graph this here. Uh, suppose this graph is a graph that describes um, the motion of an object, a path. So let's say if I was to graph this here, we got up one, and then cubic is going to be, um, so one, we're going to get two there, so there it is there, and then negative one, we're going to get zero, so there it is. Suppose we have this graph of x cubed plus one here, and it's describing... Uh, the path of an object moving. So suppose if I have, uh, so here's my x, here's my y. Suppose I have um, an object that is here. Let's say this is where the object is at the initial position t equals zero, and then it's moved to this position here. So t equal to one. So as as this object moving, you know, as this object moving along this path here, with respect to time the horizontal distance is changing with respect to time and the vertical distance changing with respect to time. So uh, uh, the the change in horizontal distance, we can think of that as dx, dy, uh, excuse me, dt, sorry. And then the change in vertical distance, you would think of that as dy, dt. Um, so in this case, it would say dx, dt is a change in, in the x direction or x coordinates, right? And then this would be the change in or the rate rate of change, so rate, rate of change in the y direction, right? Um, so if we look at this here, we can we can kind of see the, how these variable x and y are relating to to t, and that's what we're given here, both x and, and y are a function of t. Um, so let's look at, let's look at what, what you know how do we kind of relate all three variables together here so the first thing we want to do is we want to bring back the uh, implicit differentiation so let's go ahead and, and use um, implicit differentiation to find 
dy dt, meaning we are going to differentiate this. So this means we uh, differentiate or take the derivative with respect, respect to t. And, and because x is also a function of t, every time we differentiate this here, we also have to find, uh, we, have to, we have to multiply by the uh, uh, derivative of x in terms of t as well. So that's, that's where the chain was going to come in. So let's see here. So we got, we got this function here as y equals x to the third plus 1. So if we're going to implicit differentiate this here, we're going to take d dt of both sides, d dt, because we are differentiating with respect to variable t, right? third plus d dt of 1, okay, so that will give us d dt of y is going to be dy dt, okay, and then d dt of x to the third, we're going to apply the derivative of the outside function is going to be 3x squared, so that's the power rule, um, the uh, inside function is the x, x is a function of t, so we're going to times it by d dt of x as well, because x is a function of t. Over here is going to be 0 because the derivative of a constant is going to be 0. Um, so now we have dy dt equal to 3x squared. Uh, dx dt or d, d over dt of x is going to be dx dt, whatever that derivative with respect to t is of the function x. We don't know what the function x um, in term of t is. Uh, it could be, you know, x plus 1 or 3x plus 5, whatever. Whatever whatever the function x describing describing the change, you know, change in the horizontal distance as it move along this path. So whatever that is, we don't know. Um, plus zero. So now we have we have now we have the two variables x and y relate to each other by t. This saying that the change in the vertical distance y is equal to three times x squared plus dx dt. Meaning whatever the the relative position for x is, we can figure out how fast is the y is changing. So now now let's do part B. Let's tie it together. So part B, I wanna, I wanna find. Let's find, find dy dt. Let's find how fast is the vertical distance changing when when x is five. And uh, let's do not five. Let's just do, uh, let's just do two. And then and dx dt is three. Okay. All right, so we're given that, okay, when the position x is 2, let's mark that on the graph. Here, when it's 2, here's 1, here's 2. All right, we want to see, we want to see, you know, when x is 2 and then dx dt is 3, 3 horizontal units per um, per unit, and then we want to see how fast is, is the vertical unit is changing. So to do that, we plug all this information to this equation here to find dy dt. So we're going to say dy dt is equal to 3 times 2 squared times 3. So this is like 3, you know, let's say units per second, something like that, right? So now we have that uh, 12, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36. Okay, so this saying that this saying that um, the when x is two, the horizontal distance is two, the coordinate is two, and is if x is changing, if x is changing um, three units, you know, if x is changing, uh, if dx dy dx dt sorry is changing three units per second, then uh, the vertical distance, the vertical distance is changing uh, 36 units per second okay and the the, the vertical distance is the dy the D, dy dt okay so that's what it's saying so at the when x is 2 you know if I if I was to extend this graph out more when x is 2, Right, so when x is two, we got y is nine. Suppose here is nine. So this is saying that at this position here, if the object is here, here if suppose the object is moved all the way up here, then this is saying that at this position, this object right here will move thirty six units vertically if x is increased by, you know, three units. Okay, so that's that's what the answer means.
So this would be a, a, a math problem describing the coordinates x and y if we introduce that the x and y are, are the two, you know, uh, coordinates that depends on the third variable t, we can we can actually relate to uh, in those two together using implicit differentiations and 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 using uh, an equation to describe it. Uh, so that's one example. Uh, I want to go over another example. Uh, this is uh, the latter example, and and this kind of demonstrate how are uh, the uh, variables are related in respect to time as well. Uh, so in this example here. We have a 26 foot ladder is placed against the wall. If the top of the ladder is sliding down the wall at two feet per second, at what rate is the bottom ladder is moved away from the wall when the bottom of the ladder is 10 feet away from the wall. So that's a lot of things going on there. So let's start with the first thing, okay? Uh, we got 26 foot ladder placed against the wall. So let's say we have a wall. Right, here's my wall, right? Maybe wall should be straight, so I'm going to make this straight. Okay, here's my wall. Okay. Uh, so we have a 26-foot ladder placed against the wall, so my ladder is going to be in blue. Let's say here is the ground. All right, here's the ground. And here is the ladder. So, right, so here's my ladder there. All right, here's my ladder. If you believe it, that so that is a twenty-six foot ladder. So here's my ladder, twenty-six foot ladder. Okay. So this is saying that if somehow this ladder here is moving or sliding down the wall at two feet per se second. So if this ladder here was to go down or move down, moving down, right? So if ladder, ladder. Moving down at two feet per second. Okay. Uh, how fast? How fast is or at what rate is this bottom of the ladder is moving away from the wall? Okay. When it is when it is when it is ten feet from the wall. When. Right. So it said, how fast? How fast is the ladder is moving from the wall? Okay. When it's ten feet from the wall. Okay. So uh, we can look at this as uh, the uh, origin. So think of this as the origin, and then we have the x and the y coordinate so let's call this distance so so it is it is arbitrary that we don't know the vertical distance from the wall uh, from the ground up to the top of the ladder that we don't know that it just said here's 26 foot ladder is placed against the wall uh, so we don't know that so let's call this uh the vertical distance y okay so y is the distance all right y is the distance from the top of the ladder to the ground, right? The ground. Okay. Uh, what about x? Okay, let's introduce x. Okay. So x, we're gonna say x is here. Again, if this ladder is arbitrarily placed against the wall, we don't know. You know, x can be any any you know any value. So x is just the distance. You know, from the uh, wall to the bottom of the ladder. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. So this is asking, okay, when the ladder is dropping down at two feet per second, if the ladder is dropping down two feet per second, that means the vertical distance is changing. That means the rate of y is changing with respect to t. So this is what we're given here. So I'm gonna say given. Okay, we're given that the rate of vertical distance is sliding down. So we say we're given that dy dt, that is if y is the distance from the top of the ladder to the ground, then the then the dy dt represents the change or the rate where the ladder is sliding down. And that, that is sliding down at two feet per second. So let's give that negative because it's going down. 
uh, toward the negative direction. So dy dt is the rate at which the ladder is sliding down the wall. Okay, and this is saying that find out how fast is the ladder move away from the wall when it's ten feet from the wall. Okay, given this. Okay, and when x is ten, find how fast is the ladder moving from the wall. Okay, so it's asking to find dx dt. Okay, so dy dt is how fast the ladder is dropping down. Um, dx dt is how fast the wall, uh, the ladder is moving from the wall. So with this information here, we're supposed to put things together and find the XDT. Well, in order for us to tie all this variable together, we got X variable, we have the T variable, we have the Y variable, each of those variable X and Y, depend on T. In order for us to relate all three variables together, we need to describe the relationship through an equation. Um, and, and from that equation, we can start uh, implicit differentiate that and then find the rates and how we uh, uh, describe or are able to describe the relationship between those variables. So if here is y, here is is, is x, um, and the ladder is 26 feet uh, long, um, the way we can tie x and y together is by looking at this through a right triangle. Okay, if this distance x and this distance y, and that's and that's twenty six feet uh, ladder, uh, we have this thing called the Pythagorean theorem. So this thing say that um, let's uh, so x and y can be relate by right. So we have Pythagorean. Korean theorem. This saying that you know a squared plus b squared equals c squared in any right triangle. Okay, so my x can be a, my b can be y. So we can do x squared plus y squared equal to c. In this case, is the longest leg, which is twenty six feet long. Okay. So there it is. There's my equation that, that describes the relationship between x and y. So now, given that both x and y are related to each other by t, we're going to go ahead and implicit differentiate with respect to t. Okay. So that means we have d dt of x squared d dt of y squared and then d dt of 26 that's what we're doing okay so let's do that so d dt of x squared is going to be 2x and then since x is a function of t the chain rule said we had to times by the derivative of x respect to t and that is dx dt and then over here we have 2y times dy dt and then the d dt 26 is going to be zero all right so now from this equation here, it gave us the second equation, which is the derivative equation, um, that tell us the relationship between the two rates, right? So this is asking, okay, find, find dx dt when x is 10 and dy dt is this. Well, we have, we have dy dt, we have x, we don't know what dx dt is because we just find that, but we don't know what y is either, okay? Well, we can find y because when x is 10, we can find y, right? So how do we do that? We said when x is 10, we have, we have this equation here that relates both x and y, right? If this arbitrary ladder is placed against the wall, somehow it's placed that when x is 10 units from the wall, we can backtrack and figure out how high from the, uh, the, the bottom to the top of the ladder by using this equation x squared plus y squared equal 26. So when x is 10, we have 10 squared plus, uh -oh, uh, plus y squared equal to, uh, that's 26 squared. 26 squared uh, 
Yeah, it should be x squared plus y squared equal 26 squared. Sorry about that. So that's going to be 0. So now we can find uh, we can find y squared. So we have y squared is 26 squared uh, minus 10 squared. Um, so let's see here. We have 26 squared minus 10 squared. So what is that? So we got 26 times 26 minus 100 is 5, 576, and then we're going to square root that. So we're looking at what for x here. So square root of, of 576, so that's 24. So this is saying that if somehow we know the position of x, okay, if x is 10, then y has to be y has to be 24 in order for this right triangle to work out. And that's what we did there. We found y. Okay, so now we're going to plug everything in, okay? So we said x is 10. We don't know what dx dt is because we're supposed to find that. When x is 10, y is 24. And then we're given that the latter is dropping down 2 feet per second. So that's negative 2 equals 0. So that's 20 dx dt plus 48 times negative 2. Let's just go ahead and do that all together. What do we have there? We have negative 4 times 24, so that's not negative 96 equals 0. So that means dx dt, 20 there, equal 96, divide by um, 20 both sides. So dx dt is 96 divided by 20, so that's 4.8 feet per second. So this saying that, okay, when x is 10 feet from the wall and the ladder is sliding down at 2 feet per second, then the ladder is moving away from the wall at 4.8 feet per second. Okay. So that's what that answer means. Okay. So going back to the picture again. Okay. Somehow if we place this ladder that is that is 10 feet away from the wall, okay? If if somehow we place this ladder here is 10 feet away from the wall, okay? And we uh also, let the top of the ladder slide down at a certain rate, which is negative 2 feet per second. Then at the same time, this here, this direction here, this bottom of the ladder is moving away at 4.8 feet per second. So that's what we found there. We found that rate.